Uh, this is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Global Correlations. Let's look at the plight of the hostages. That's what we're doing today uh, with Rupati Kandakar. Welcome to the show, Rupati. Hello, Jay. Thank you for having me. And as we continue our Israel uh, terrorist attack uh, series, I think we are in a good place right now to talk about the hostages, which have yeah. been like uh, the most vulnerable point of this entire ordeal that Israel is going through. Yeah, you know, it just strikes me funny that, um, well, first I'd like to give you the definition of cynicism, because I think Hamas is being very cynical, and, uh, and I've heard that word so much in the press, I wanted to get a definition of it. Cynicism oh. is an attitude characterized by a general distrust of the motives of others. A cynic may have a general lack of faith or hope in people motivated by ambition, um, desire, greed, gratification, materialism, goals, and opinions that a cynic perceives as vain, unattainable, or ultimately meaningless. I think we're actually expanding the definition of cynicism uh, here in Gaza during this war. And there's so many cynical things happening by Hamas. And one of them is the hostages. And let me just offer the thought that keeps bouncing around in my mind. You know, if they release the hostages, they could probably negotiate for some kind of truce. But they're not releasing them. And, you know, yeah. they, they, they dribble them out one at a time or two at a time. That's not really releasing them. There's still hundreds involved uh, under the, you know, the hospitals and buildings and in the tunnels and so forth. And so what is striking about it is they still have pretty much all of the hostages. And furthermore, and this is part of the cynicism, they're still firing rockets. They're firing rockets into the center of Israel, into Tel Aviv, uh, and into Haifa. And they're firing them from Hezbollah, is firing them from the north. And, and people are, are dying and being wounded from those rockets. And this keeps on going on. It's the ultimate citizen. And then they claim that she, you know, Israel is being uh, not being humanitarian, but they still are fighting and shooting at the troops. They're still, you know, using those uh, what do you call it, anti-tank missiles on the Israeli yes. equipment. Um, so, you know, what I get is what what kind of a legitimate, uh, genuine effort are they making toward peace? Nothing. They still have the hostages. They're still firing the rockets. They're still shooting at, at the Israelis. What kind of effort is that? They haven't given up in any way. So let's talk about uh, the plight of the hostages. Uh, why haven't they been released, aside from that cynicism I spoke about? So what do we know about the hostages? You, you were looking into that, uh, Rupati. Yeah, Jay. See, now this hostage situation that happened after the terrorist attack of October 7th was not something that it was stumbled upon. These uh, Hamas terrorists, they had handbooks on how to take people hostage. So while they were massacring and slaughtering uh, Israeli people point blank, they were also in on uh, taking hostages. Now hostage, a hostage situation plays on vulnerability and stakes. So uh, when you see that these uh, uh, these militants had these handbooks on how to take hostages, where to take them, capture them alive. These are the things. Take the women and the children. You know, this is the weaker section of uh, uh, society and war. So take them. So they know what to do. Even in the under the influence of drugs, like we discussed in our previous program, they were still following the handbook. And the mission aim of uh, theirs was very clear cut. They wanted hostages. Because as we uh, spoke about earlier, in 2006, when Gal Shadat was taken hostage for one soldier, Israel released 1,000 Palestine prisoners. Many of them were murderers, you know. So this kind of uneven bargaining that they are targeting. And, you know, we had uh, the issue of Iran taking six hostages and taking uh, billions of dollars from America. That is the background that the Hamas is playing on. And we have to be sure about one fact, that October 7 terrorist attack into Israel was uh, to provoke a retaliation. 
they knew israel is going to retaliate this was not just a, a attack to uh, destroy it was attack to provoke and then evoke a reaction so they wanted israel to retaliate come for, come to the negotiating table how do you get israel to come to the negotiating table what is stopping the entire blockade of gaza the hostages and this vulnerability point is what keeps uh, the offensive a little bit muted you know Jay? they want to put in uh, they would have had no word in negotiations if they did not have the hostages now we know that hostage situation is a uh, negotiation negotiable because uh, in a normal situation but israel is on uh, fighting a terrorist attack it cannot have softness in negotiation it's not negotiable it has to have a a, a straight on head on uh, attitude towards this i know it's a bit harsh it's a hard liner uh, this that we take but uh, well, it's also a hardliner to have 200 mm -hmm. people who are terrified every moment, some of whom are wounded or sick or don't have medicines, some of whom are babes in arms. Talk about hard. That's hard. Yes. Yeah, and uh, uh, Jay, they don't have, you know, where, where have they been kept, like we discussed? Uh, you, you told me about the soldier. Uh, under the same, in the, in the same tunnel network that we speak about. And uh, many of them need medical aid. Are they being provided the medical aid, their babies separated from their parents who have been slaughtered? I mean, this is a brutal uh, situation that Hamas has created. Jay, where is the protest for the hostages? We see people tearing down posters of uh, the hostages. We have no sympathy for these hostages or no, um, uh, you know, bringing down of Hamas and telling them that you have to release the hostages. There's no international pressure on Hamas to release the hostages. There's no campaign to release the hostages. It is just stop Israel from attacking Gaza. No, release the hostages should be the main point because it's been over how many days now? Two months? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 38 days. So they are, uh, we are the second month and um, these people are going through trauma like you said, in the Hamas heartland. And they have uh, officers, militant officers, who are in charge of torturing the uh, hostages. And the stake point for each hostage is a thousand soldiers, a thousand uh, terrorists. They wanted to take 200, give us 6,000, free all the Palestine uh, uh, prisoners. I mean, it doesn't make sense, isn't it? Well, you know, I was, I was telling you that the number of hostages, we have to get the number of hostages from, from Hamas. And uh, by the way, um, the uh, Islamic Jihad has some hostages too. I don't remember, or I never knew how many they had, but apparently the hostages have been either taken by both organizations, Hamas and Islamic Jihad. You remember them. They were the ones who fired that rocket, and then it, it misfired and it fell on the parking lot in the hospital. That's the Islamic Jihad. But they're, you know, they're coordinated with Hamas. They have some of the hostages, and it makes you wonder if the hostages are being passed around between Hamas and Islamic Jihad, um, which makes it all the more, which they want to make it all the more difficult for the Israelis to uh, release, to find and release the hostages. Anyway, the you know the thing is that you never know from day to day how many are there exactly. You never know from day to day what's the makeup. You never know from day to day. Um, you know uh, uh, what's you know what's the the groupings and who's from Israel and who's not from Israel. The Israelis can't be sure because here's the thing: Hamas doesn't tell them. They don't give them names. They don't release that. They keep it a big secret. You don't know how many are still alive. Um, so, you know, it's all trying to make everybody worry, as worried. It's terrorism, as worried as you can possibly make them. Yeah. Yes, it, it is um, uh, It is making Israel bargain from a weak front. Right now, what uh, the campaign needs is a military stronghold. And, uh, Jay, we know 
domestic politics plays a very big role. And Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who is now, he has appointed, I think, Gal Hirsch, uh, who's a retired general for just focusing on the hostages. So why, why has he done this? Because the families of the people uh, who are held hostage are going to uh, naturally uh, ask him about what is he doing about the hostage uh, situation rather than ask him about the military campaign. So that is uh, a point which will uh, hold back the military uh, uh, setup. Now, they ask for a Gaza ceasefire. Israel agreed for a four-hour ceasefire every day and allow to allow passing of the Palestine people through the south border. They should have released some hostages. If but Jay, we are dealing with an enemy who does not have, who does not want to negotiate. They want to just destroy and hurt and continue this campaign of mass propaganda. Can you can you imagine what they have done with this hostage situation? It would have created a furor all over the world that two hundred plus uh, hostages are captured. What do we hear on the pages? The pseudo liberals just speak about how, uh, you know, Palestinians are being messed. What about yeah, the hostages? That's so interesting. And we get the numbers of how many Palestinians have been wounded. Every day. And, and, and some of them are Hamas, I think. And and I remember the, uh, the, the, the hostages were being paraded uh, through the streets. They were, they were naked. Uh, huh? Paraded through the streets of Gaza City, and there were huge crowds all around them. Those were not crowds of Hamas or Islamic oh. Jihad. Those were crowds of regular Palestinian people who were cheering them on. Um, so it's not as pure as it may seem. They're they're not just witnessing this. They're not just victims of this. You know, you can say they're human shields all day long, but they were there on the streets yes. cheering it on. And yes. that's that. You don't have to do that. You could stay home too. You could stay that. You know, away from the crowd. But they didn't do that. Anyway, um, you, you're right. They 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 took the hostages and immediately began. Uh, their P Palestinian movement propaganda. So yes. what happened in a matter of hours after this massacre is the propaganda all shifted to the poor Palestinians. I think yes. they were, as you said, they were prepared for an Israeli reaction, and they planned their propaganda campaign um, in, you know, in that thought. So they were ready to go as soon as the massacre took place. And if you look back uh, over the last month, more than a month now, um, you find that there were zero or to none of these pro-Israel uh, protests. Um, there was really very little protest against the massacre. Um, yes. But almost immediately, we had all these protests uh, against the Israelis. I, I find that a, a, a masterwork of propaganda. So um, it's been going like that ever since. And and it's taken root. It's really a, a remarkable job in propaganda, social media. There was an article in the paper this morning um, to the fact that the aides in Congress, you know, the young people who help the elected officials, whether they be, you know, House or Senate, are out in front of the Capitol, and they are parading around protesting against Israel. Those people never, ever protested against the massacre, not a word, right. not a sound. Right. And we and we here in Hawaii, we have protests today over the weekend, um, you know, against the Israelis. But those people who show up against the Israelis never showed up um, to protest the massacre. I find that a, a remarkable example of confusion, of social media, of misinformation, disinformation, and ignorance. But there you have a very effective propaganda campaign, which is still happening. And if 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 we didn't focus um, on the hostages, I think people would forget them entirely. Uh, absolutely, Jay. I call these people pseudo liberals. You know, they 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 fake it out to be sympathetic. But are you sympathetic to a terrorist cause? I mean, none of them have the answers, Jay. Anti-Semitism is a, a fashion uh, thing right now. I mean, they don't understand. Nobody knows the uh, uh, 
issues that are involved. Nobody understands what uh, lives are involved. Nobody understands the aim of the organization. The aim of the organization, Hamas, that they're supporting is just to eliminate Israel, to eliminate Jews. Out of 10 million Jews worldwide, you want to have another massacre? It's not possible. Nobody will... Uh, I mean, I'm telling you, let the world be on one side. If <laughs> you can get... Uh, you can keep your aim of preserving each Israeli life, that is going to be uh, carrying out this campaign. And that is our weak point in dealing with these hostages. So, this was a counteroffensive that they Yes, did. it's part of the war. This is a hybrid war. Part yes. of it is a provocation. Part of it is a, a shooting war in Gaza now. And um, uh, the tunnels and all that. And part of it is propaganda. And they all happen at the same time. It's well planned, and you know the propaganda war seems to be working very well because they're using social media, and people believe what they read on social media, and there's really no moderation. So, you know, you get these two sides in a story thing, but in fact, only one side did that massacre. Uh, and Israel would just like to be left in peace, but it can't with people doing massacres like that. It's, this is all part of defense. Anyway, so my 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 thing, my. My point to you is that there are talks going on in Qatar because the Hamas uh, leadership lives in Qatar, which is thousands of miles away. Um, and Qatar is trying to be very helpful and um, allow on its watch negotiations, uh, which yes. would allow for the release of the hostages. But they're lingering. And I think the article in the paper about this was aspirational rather than real. Um, everybody's hustling off to Qatar to see if they can't make it make it work, but it's not working yet. And no. I think I think you, you know more research would be necessary. But I I think the reason it's never going to work is because Hamas is asking for the release of six, seven, oh, eight thousand um, yes. uh, you know terrorists from from Israeli jails uh, yes. who have been involved in terror. Um, and boy, that is that would be an interesting turn of events if they all got released. Now we have a huge force of terrorists back on the street. The Israelis will never see peace with that. So um, I think it's hung up on that. And uh, Hamas doesn't want to, or Islamic uh, Jihad is also there. They don't yeah. want to release any of these people except on a rib grab basis where they can be used in the propaganda war. The, the, the negotiation point is all for all. It is not how much, all for all. All 200 hostages for 8,000, 10,000 prisoners. Uh, Jay, Hamas, uh, Gaza citizens are playing such a big role in this uh, uh, human shield thing that we don't know where the hostages are kept, whether they are kept with civilians, uh, you know, where are they being uh, kept in tunnels, the exact location is uh, dispersed across Gaza. So it makes the military campaign more, uh, uh, you know. Uh, sure. I, you know, I, we have all this talk about the hospital, right? Yeah. Well, the hospitals, there's more than one involved. I say to myself, why don't the Israelis just knock on the front door and say, could we please inspect your basement? Because we have reason to believe that Hamas lives there. And uh, apparently in one hospital that happened. Uh, they went, inspected the basement, and they took footage. We can show the footage because uh, it's just being distributed today about an Israeli, an Israeli officer is leading, um, you know, the guy with the camera around, and they're taking pictures of places where the, the hostages were kept, where Hamas was, had its offices and his meeting rooms and its bedrooms and its... Uh, it's planning rooms right there under the hospital. And there's footage of that. Well, we knew that really was the case. Um, mm. that there were people who denied that. There are, there are people who denied that the hostages, are you ready? People who denied the hostages were ever taken in the first place or that the yes. attack ever occurred. It's like denying the Holocaust, you know? Um, yes. So anyway, despite these denials, there's proof uh, in, in this footage which has been released. Bottom line is uh, under the hospitals is one really good place where the hostages have been kept and they've been moved around and they've been photographed. 
But you're right. We don't know uh, whether they've been offered their medicines. Some of them are senior. Uh, we don't know about those children uh, uh, who, let's see the, the clip of the children. <laughs> This is a couple of weeks ago, and this this is Hamas holding toddlers and small children. And uh, these are, look at how small these children are. These are hostage children. Can you imagine how traumatic that is? Drink, yeah. Bismillah. Yeah, drink. Oh, God, oh, it's just sickening. Yes, sickening. And they've, they've been in, in, uh, in, in, as imprisoned as hostages by these guys, these guys, the same people who who murdered their parents and their and their <laughs> brothers and sisters and 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 chopped heads off and did the most brutal things imaginable or unimaginable, and now they have these children, these toddlers, babes in arms. Would you trust? Yeah. Would you trust them to take care of those babes? And yes, suppose, yeah, yes. go ahead. They're seeing the guns. They're seeing the gun. babies who are seeing guns. You know, he's rocking him uh, across a gun. I mean, that is how uh, vulnerable the children are right now. And nothing of this in the media, Jay. Nothing of this. I mean, each life is important. There have been negotiations where Israel has negotiated for remains of a Israeli soldier. So that is how much you value a body. Uh, leave alone a living life. That is what is holding back uh, the Gaza uh, front hold. And see the babies, I mean, uh, uh, to release a propaganda video like this, he has to say Bismillah before he uh, drinks the water. This is uh, pro pro promoting your own religion at the cost of promoting another's religion. Religion always has respect for the other. If he is drinking his food and wine without uh, taking the name of your God, doesn't mean it makes him less of a believer in God. So this kind of imposing, uh, this is a very small thing, but this kind of imposing of uh, a one religion on violence, now the child is petrified. He will drink, he will say whatever the uh, captor is uh, saying. This is the same thing with adults. When they are talking uh, on videos, uh, release uh, us and they're treating us very well. It is a uh, pressure. It is pressure of violence that uh, the captors are putting. And you say this for us. The child said Bismillah. So the uh, adults are going to say whatever Gaza is, uh, Hamas is treating us very well. Yeah. You know, on October 28th, when those two women were released, they said we were treated very well. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're still in captivity. Yes. Uh, they're not being cared for by their parents. They're being cared for oh. by these animals who have killed their parents uh, oh. and, and beheaded their brothers and sisters. Unbelievable. So <clears throat> what can you imagine all the hostages not staying alive in this period? I am sure that a lot of them have died without medicine, without health care, without food or water, or who knows what, being moved around, pushed around. I mean, Hamas hates them. I mean, yes. it's an abiding hatred for no reason, but there you go. And so I, I can't imagine the original number still being alive. We right. don't know. We may never find out how many were taken and how many died in the process in some ways. We know that some of them were wounded and bleeding. Uh, yeah. I, I don't imagine that Hamas gave them any medical care. No. So, <clears throat> And, Jay, we know the numbers from our side. We know the prisoners who are there. But like you said, we don't know the numbers from the other side. How many hostages they have? And the yeah. timing that they keep for the hostages, for the negotiations, they will send in two American hostages out. They have other countries also, isn't it? Mm. Around 20 countries involved. So it makes all, all the more complication uh, in this hostage uh, situation. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, holding back that they're doing of the hostages is very dangerous for future. Uh, this, this has happened. This is happening. This is an event which has taken place and it is a catastrophic event. But if they get into this habit, can you imagine the vulnerability at airports? Like we spoke about the last time they had stormed a, a plane. If they had taken those people, you're going to sit and negotiate for each person? It's going to play in every street. It's going to play in every school. Suppose there's a school 
uh, and people come in and take hostages. How do you negotiate with these host uh, with these captors? So if this becomes a habit, it's going to bring in a dangerous precedent in because this is one of I think I think one of the largest number of hostages taken ever in a terrorist attack. Yeah, yeah. So, but let me let me add a thought though that just occurred to me that some of them we know were humiliated and raped. Yes, and we saw actually photos of women who looked like they've been bleeding and humiliated and raped and and then paraded naked in the streets of Gaza City. Okay, and then you can imagine that there were further rapes um, in those tunnels, in that tunnel under the hospital, for example, that the hostage room under the hospital, uh, or killed, or killed in, in, in view of others. One of these days, um, the hostages will ultimately be released, I, I hope. Oh, um, yes. And the ones who have been witness to these rapes and all of the torture that we've heard about um, and the killings in the tunnels, they're going to be able to tell their story. Now, if you were Hamas, would you want that particular hostage to be released? Because that will infuriate, that will, that will be a, a, a propaganda point for the Israelis, and it will make Hamas look like the, the monsters they are. So I'm thinking that if I'm Hamas, and I know that a certain person or persons have been involved in these rapes, these tortures, or observing killings of others, there's a story, a terrible story to tell. They can't leave. I can't let them go back. They must disappear. They must be killed because that story is so powerful. What do you think? Yeah, Jay, it is. Uh, but the videos, footage that we see every day, they are telling audience of this. And Hamas is a shameless organization. When they have no respect for life, how can we expect them to have respect for women? They don't have a basic uh, respect for life. They have not uh, they thought about age. They have not thought about gender. They have not thought about uh, you know sex. They have not thought about anything. Just brutal killing was the aim. Terror, spreading terror in Israel was the aim. And the ultimate goal is to eliminate Israel. So this, is, uh, this um, uh, mistreatment of women is just a, a point in the campaign. Just a point. And uh, coming out with these audios, I mean, it's going to fall on more deaf ears in the world than people who are going to respond to it. Because people who are supporting Hamas in the face of the October 7 terrorist attack are plenty more than the ones who are not. And it's, uh, I told you, they're pseudo-liberals. They, it's fashionable to support uh, the poor Palestine people rather than the butchered uh, Israeli people, they're not thinking about. It. And imagine now, we, we spoke about the negotiations happening in Qatar. Israel is surrounded by antagonistic enemies. And to survive in that with a limited population, we don't have a unlimited uh, yeah, population which will uh, engage in you know jihad or anything. There is a 10 million population which has to be preserved. It has to be valued. And these people play on that point. I told you, two sides of the coin. One is uh, prone, happy to suicide and go to heaven. One is trying to preserve each life, respect each remain of each life. They even negotiate for bodies. Israel negotiates for bodies of prisoners to be laid to a respectful uh, uh, place. So. You see the difference in the mindset that is going to make all the difference in this hostage situation. And I mean, the situation that the Hamas people are bringing on these hostages, I don't think we'll be able to document it, Jay. No, I agree with you. It's very, very hard to document and people will deny yes. it ever happened. It's like yes. those people who pull the posters off the wall. What are they yes. saying? They're denying it ever happened. That's what they're saying. And that yes. the posters are false. They're fake posters. They're fake mm. hostages. Um, yes. This is really awful. Now, Israel recently, not at the beginning, but over the last week or 10 days, trying to combat that uh, with having the families of these hostages mm. 
get up on the media uh, and, and tell you about the awful experience they had and how they worry about them. And it's it's really it's really awful to listen to them. But I think there's a good reason for Israel to do that. I don't think Israel would like to do that because it, you know, their the culture is not not to. It, it's it's a sensibility about that. But but they are doing it now. So my my more difficult question for you, Rupati, okay, is how is this all going to play out? Do we have an idea? Uh, you you mentioned a minute ago is we'll never know what happened in those tunnels. We'll never know what happened in those rooms they were holding, have been holding the hostages. We'll never know who who died and disappeared, uh, or who was was made to disappear because they'd seen too much. Um, but how will this play out? Does anybody know? Do you have any guesses, speculations, prognostications? You know, my one point for this entire ordeal is that uh, this has happened. We are dealing with such a brutal enemy. This should not happen in the future again because we cannot afford something like this to happen in the future again. So the dealing of this thing is going to be brutal, Jay. It's going to be very hardliner and it's going to invite so much criticism all over. At one point of time, when they go into Gaza, they're going to have these hostages who are going to be used as human shields. You can't come in. And that time, I think Israel will have to make a decision whether to go ahead or to wait or whatever. But this is for the future of Israel. And it it is, it is uh, any hostage situation is hardliner when at that one moment you have to decide whether the captor to be destroyed is important or the hostage to be saved is important. So these, uh, this is a balance which is so precarious and with the number, sheer number, 200 plus uh, hostages and we don't know how many more, uh, it is a very you know, soft point that Israel is caught into. But we know it has to be hard to defend for future, for existential crisis of Israel is happening right now. And hostages are but now sadly a part of it. And it can't be the whole campaign. It's a military yeah. camp against terrorism. Well, this is turning into a war of attrition. Yes. It's going to last a long time. The economy oh. of the state of Israel cannot tolerate having... Uh, 300, 400,000 uh, soldiers in the field like this. Um, yes. Very questionable as to whether the United States Congress is, is going to abide by the moral position expressed oh. by the administration. Uh, there's all kinds of arguments going on in Congress, especially in the House. And um, they, you know, they're not even funding the government, uh, mm -hmm. much less supporting Israel. So it's really it doesn't look very good, but I I would throw one possibility at you, because it's a war of attrition, Hamas and Hezbollah and the Iranians, um, and the Russians they're involved, they would like to keep this off balance for a long time. Oh, causes want to keep it uh, off balance for a long time, and they probably know that the return of the hostages uh, will shorten that time. Um, so if they want to make it a long-term war of attrition, they won't give it back, or they'll give it back in very small numbers, drips and drabs at the best. And we won't know or realize how many of them have died in captivity. We won't know. And when that happens, it'll be after such a long period of time that it won't mean as much as it would mean right now. So I, I think it's a tremendous global tragedy happening right now mm -hmm. and israel cannot be deterred by that they have to factor that in and their primary mission has to be to stop this from ever happening again your thoughts right on point jay right on point i mean this these people uh have taken uh for one person they waited for five years so they are uh, in a position to they're in a long-term mindset they want to keep this going and geopolitics benefits from disturbances in the uh, international system and that is exactly what is happening and uh, this um, is less about israel palestine and like you said it's more about the uh, broader picture and in that the hostages are somehow get disappearing 
the point of the hostages existing is disappearing. Negotiating about hostages is disappearing right now. Funding is the most important thing for the campaign. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, the retaliation that we are seeing against the terrorist attack is what has taken the forefront rather than negotiations for the hostages. So it's yeah. so true. Oh, it's so sad. Okay, we'll follow with some more, Rupati. Thank you very much for uh, analyzing and reporting on this to us. It's a very important issue, and I don't think we can forget it ever, and not no. now or ever. Never. Take care. Talk soon. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.